Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Linda. Now, thanks for the call, but I have to say Nick's tonight, Angel. As I'm involved with a prize fighter. They tell me he's murder in the ring, but it looks like there may be a murder out of it. This is Ed Hurley, he friends, inviting you to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon, transcribed tonight. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now, join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Beautiful Bait. Now, the case of the beautiful bait. It's Wednesday night in New York, and in a fight arena, Al Lasseter is eagerly watching one of the boys in the second round of the main event. Lassiter is the fat little man at ringside who keeps poking the pretty girl sitting next to him with his elbow to call her attention to what excites him. Vicky, that kid's terrific. Yeah. Look at that jab. Oh, look at it. I found it. Wow, there's another. Hey, that one hurt. I'll say. Broke three ribs. Huh? Look, Al, you don't have to keep giving me the elbow. I'm paying attention. What? Oh, I just want you to watch this boy. What do you think I'm watching? The scenery? He's dynamite. Come on, Joey. You got him going? Keep on top of him. Yo! Ow! Ah, Joey will kill him. Well, he better do it quicker. I'll kill you. This is it, Vicky. This is it. Of course, he's in trouble. Look at that, Joey. Go. He's out for a KO. And it does it. Of course, he's down. Well, thanks for telling me, Lassiter. I wouldn't have known. Ah, he's through. Well, I hope so. I can't take much more. Well, that's it. Come on, let's go. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Next time I go to a fight with you, I'm going into training, too. I got to get that Joey O'Hara... Get him. His contract's up. He's handled right. Maybe he won't renew with Whitcomb. Well, how do you handle him right? I don't. That's your department. Well, don't you get bright ideas. You'll play him along before he knows it. His name's on my contract. Did anybody ask me? I'm telling you. Well, what if I don't play? I don't put it like that. Put it <laughs> if you do play. You know that convertible you've been wanting? Uh-huh. Joey signs with me. It's yours. <laughs> All of a sudden, Joey interests me. I gotta sew him up, Vicky. The boy's gone places, right to the top. You don't find light heavies like him every day. He's young. Who knows? He may put on a few pounds and challenge the big boys. Yes, sir. The kid's dynamite. Yeah, Lassiter. Dynamite. And you want me to light the fuse. <laughs> Excuse me. Huh? Uh, aren't you Joey O'Hara? Yeah, that's right. I, I recognize you from the other side of the hotel lobby. I, uh, I saw you fight the other night. Oh, yeah? Well, you don't look like a fight fan. No? How do fight fans look? Oh, I mean, you're, well, uh, a lady. Thanks. And you're obviously a gentleman. But you, you're a fighter. Why shouldn't I be a fan? Oh, if, if you want to be, I think it's swell. It's just... Well, I don't know. Uh... You mean you're ashamed of being a boxer? Well, you shouldn't be. It takes courage, skill, clean living. <laughs> Do I sound silly? No. No, it sounds good when you say it. Well, I, I won't keep you now. You, you were going somewhere when I stopped you. Oh, just out to a movie. I, 
Hey, how about uh, you coming along? Well, I... I don't have anything planned. Good. Then it's settled. Let's go. Kenny Floyd, what are you doing in New York? I'm looking for you, sweetheart. Detroit's not the same without you. They're still making cars, I hear. Oh, but not making beautiful music. Look, run along, Ken, will you? I got a date. Hell, you're gonna cancel it. Now, look, chum. Before this goes any further, my date happens to be with an artist with his fist. Oh, you got me real worried. Well, what do you say we go inside? Huh? It's more comfortable standing here in the hall. I know what's the matter, Vicky. You're a chick who plays the percentages. Now, I don't hold that against you. I think that's smart. Meaning what? Meaning you got an eye for the blue chips. I had a short stack, so you pulled out. And, honey, things are different now. My luck's changed. Here, take a look at this roll. Catch. <laughs> so you got a roll. So what am I supposed to do? Wear a ring in my nose? They're all 50s, honey. Help yourself. And there's plenty more where they came from. No sale. All right, sweetheart. And let's look at it like this. According to the columns, you're dating Joey O'Hara. That's what tipped me you were in the big town. Well, what do you know? He can read. So I moved in, and I've been asking around. And what do you think I found out? How many bars there are in New York? I found out that up until a couple of weeks ago, you were real chummy with Al Lasseter. Fancy that. So it figures. Lasseter has chips. You'd go for that. And he has a stable of fighters. He could be interested in this O'Hara. And you're just the bait he'd need. Now we're playing guessing games. Well, one way to find out if I'm guessing, I could drop a hint to O'Hara. No, Ken. Oh. Oh, all of a sudden, she's not the sharp chick. Huh? That hit a nerve. Well, it, well it, it's just that Joey might get the wrong idea. And he likes me. See, he likes me a lot. I, I wouldn't want to hurt him. Now, wait a minute, Vicky. Something's out of gear. You started running too fast. Now, don't tell me you're that worried about hurting some jerk who's... Some... Oh, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Why didn't I think of that? Certainly, you're soft on him. Maybe Lassett is the one I ought to talk to, huh? Look... What are you trying to do? Just what is it you want? I thought that was obvious, sweetheart. I want you. And you think this will get me? Blackmail? Well, why not? I have what Lassiter has. A bankroll. Of course, maybe I don't have shoulders like O'Hara, but... He used to think I wasn't so hard to take. He'll come around again. I hate to disappoint you, but uh, you're counting this chick a little too fast, Ken. If we're going to play guessing games, I can do some guessing, too. Like where this bankroll came from you're so proud of. You didn't get it singing hymns. You don't know where I got it. Well, maybe I know where to find out. So before you go running to Joey or Lassiter with any of your pipe dreams, just remember it's a two-way street, honey, and you could have an accident. Now, here's the roll back. Catch. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Are you Michael Waring? Mm-hmm. Also called the Falcon, but don't ask me why. And uh, you're Vicki Terrence, huh? Well, I heard you're a good detective, but that's kind of stretching it. Why? I've just been looking at a picture of you and O'Hara nightclubbing together. I didn't know we'd been published. Now, you don't read the police gazette. <laughs> Come in. Thanks. Well, now, why do you want a detective? Well, Mr. Waring... Oh, call me Mike. Hmm? I'll call you Vicki. Unless O'Hara objects. Don't worry about Joey. He's a lion in the ring, but a lamb out of it. Well, with you as little Bo Peep, I can believe it. But back to business. Well, Mike, there's a there's a fellow I used to go with in Detroit, Ken Floyd. He he's come to New York and wants to make trouble between me and Joey. How? Well, he has some wacky yarn he's threatened to tell Joey. What yarn? Well, it hasn't anything to do with what I want you for. Vicky, I found out when people who want to hire me start holding out on me. I'm not holding out. But I'm beginning to wonder if I didn't make a mistake coming here. So am I, Angel. Look, all I want is for you to check up on Ken. He's waving a bankroll, and I'd like to know where he got it. Why? Look, I'm offering you a job. Take it or leave it. Now, how do I know you're not planning to blackmail this Ken Floyd if I bring something hot in on it? Oh, brother, he's trying to blackmail me. How? What's he got on you? It's been nice knowing you, Mr. Waring. I think I go now. How long, Vicky? <laughs> You know, most people have to work if they want to eat. Maybe you're not hungry, huh? So long, Mike. Now, here we are. 
C, four, five, and six. Uh, you going first, Mr. Lassiter. All right, Joey. And uh, now you, Vic. Oh, no, thanks, Joey. You're in better shape. You can take it. Huh? I mean, you and Mr. Lassiter okay. may have some things you want to talk about. You sit next to him. Uh, okay. Good. That's a load off my ribs. Oh, well, Mr. Lassiter, going to be some good action there tonight. Yes, there's going to be some good boys in there. You know, I like this... Uh-uh. What's the matter? There's Whitcomb, and he sees me. Oh, yeah. He's coming over. Well, don't worry. He can't do anything. Hello, Whitcomb. Well, looks like a jolly little party. Hello, Lester. And Joey. Hello, Mr. Whitcomb. And this must be the little lady I've been hearing about. This is Vicky. Yes, yes, I know. Vicky Terrence. Oh, you read the papers, too. I didn't get it from the papers. They just say you've been out with her. But I happen to know oh. why. And I happen to smell a rat. Or could it be a weasel? What's that, Vicky? I just mean somebody's trying to make trouble. Who? Why? Obviously, someone who'd rather have his dirty work done by somebody else. <laughs> you know, Whitcomb, I never thought of that angle. Yeah, I don't get it. What's, what's this all about? There's nothing mysterious about it, Joey. I just didn't have my eyes open. Somebody opened them for me. If I don't get an answer, I understand pretty quick. Somebody's going to close them for you. I see Miss Terrence has introduced you to Lassiter. Yeah? And told you he was a friend of the family or some such. All right, that's enough, Whitcomb. Wait a minute, Mr. Lassiter. I want to hear this. Go on, Whitcomb. Well, Joey, it's just that she and Lassiter happen to be more than friends. That's all. Huh? She's his girl, Joey. Don't you get it? Don't listen to him, Joey. Vicky. It's a lie, Joey. I've been wondering why you were so hard to talk to lately, Joey. Now I find out. Lassiter's girl leading you along so you'll sign with him. I don't believe it. She any... did ask you to sign with Lassiter, didn't she? Well... Didn't she? She said she thought it'd be a good idea. Yeah, good for her. That still don't prove All any... right, all right. You want proof. I'll get it. I didn't know she was Laster's girl, but there are people who do. Just promise me this, Joey, that you won't sign with Laster until you talk to them. I, I can't promise that. Why not? Because I already did sign with them today. Hello. Looking for me, Corbett? Oh, that you, Waring? Yeah, I'm looking for you. Well, I'm sorry I can't make it tonight, Angel. I have oh, to... You'll make it this afternoon. I want to talk to you. What about? What do you know about Vicky Terrence? Vicky? Oh, beautiful eyes, wonderful complexion, gorgeous figure. Look, the inventory I can take myself. What I want to know, what's with you and her? Nothing. I gave her the brush. Oh, a girl with a bill like hers... I don't believe it. Oh, it's her boyfriend's bill that stopped me. Now, look, I'm in her room. Oh, well, I... you better be careful, Corbett. That boyfriend I mentioned... I'll take care of the boyfriend. Now, what I started to say, I find your name in her address book. How come? Oh, come now, Corbett. If you're going to start investigating all the girls who have my name... I'm investigating this one. Now, what's with you and Vicky? Well, is she there? Yeah. Why not ask her? Well, that'll be a little tough, Mike, seeing as how somebody strangled her this morning. <laughs> Wearing. Oh, please, Corbett, I'm trying to eat. What, again? Every time I look into Ed's luncheonette, I find you. Somebody's got to support him. Look, I don't have all day to hang around here. Well, so long, then. Wearing. Look, I've told you all I know, Corbett. You admit the girl wanted to hire you? Yes. To check on a Ken Floyd? Yes. Well, what'd you find out about it? I didn't. Look, I don't buy your dropping the case, well, so... why not? Well, first, the girl's looks. Well, I told and you. And second, any time you turn down a chance to make a buck... That I gotta see. All right, open your eyes. Look, are you gonna cooperate? I told you she named Ken Floyd. You can check on him. I will. And you can check on her boyfriend, O'Hara. Well, we're trying to find him. He's disappeared. Well, all the more reason to check. And you could check with the desk clerk at her apartment. Maybe he saw someone go up. Are you trying to tell me my business wearing? And it so happens the desk is closed from midnight to eight. And Doc says it's possible that she was killed before eight. Well, you've still got enough to keep you busy for a while. If you don't get anywhere, come on back, and I'll be happy to take over the case for you. Well, I... For a fee, of course. So long, Corbett. Michael Waring? That's right. My name's Walter Whitcomb. I'd like to talk with you. Walter Whit... Oh, yeah. Joey O'Hara's manager. Ex-manager. That's what I wanted to see you about. May I come in? Yeah, sure. 
Well, looks like destiny. What? That I should get involved with O'Hara. I don't understand. Well, you don't need to. What's the trouble? Al Astor wanted to get Joey away from me. He baited his hook with a beautiful girl. Oh, Vicky, Vicky. Yes, you've seen in the papers what happened to her. Uh huh. But uh, what the papers don't know is that the girl was just being used by Laster. They also don't know that she was successful. What do you mean? Last night I learned that Joey signed with Lassiter. Oh. Well, it's bound to come out pretty soon. I know, and when it does, the police may think I killed the girl for revenge. Yeah, they might. So you want me to prove you didn't? Yeah. Well, just one thing first. What's that? What gave you the idea that Lassiter was behind Vicky's attentions to Joey? Why, <laughs> It's obvious. Yeah, but was it until somebody tipped you off? Well, it was suggested. Mm -hmm. uh, and would the somebody who suggested it be a fellow by the name of Ken Floyd? Wow. It was incredible. Oh, no, it's elementary, my dear Whitcomb. All done with mirrors. What do you know about Floyd? Not as much as I'd like to. I'll have to look him up after I get through with Lassiter. Oh, then you, uh, you are taking the case, Waring? Who am I to fly in the face of destiny? Yeah, Whitcomb, I'll take the case. <laughs> Many. You must think I'm absolutely crazy, Waring. Not absolutely, Lassiter. You come here and ask me a lot of questions, all of which are trying to prove that Joey O'Hara killed Vicky. I never said that, Lassiter. Well, your questions imply it. But Joey just signed up with me. If you think I'm going to sell my own fighter up the river, you got another thing coming. Now look, look, I'm just trying to find out a few things about O'Hara. You've got to admit things don't look good for him. Disappearing right after the murder? All right, he's not at his hotel. That doesn't say he disappeared. Well, what does it say? I don't know anything about him, and I've got nothing more to say. So, Waring, I know that you're a busy man. Yeah, you... sure, sure. Well, thanks for nothing, Lassiter. Uh... What was that? Something in the next room. Yeah, I must have come in the back way. Oh, uh, who's there? It's me, Mr. Lassiter. Bump into a chair. Oh, Joe. Say, what's the matter with you, boy? You look sick. I'm all right. Who's this? Mike Waring. Oh. Hello, Joey. Where you been? I don't know where I've been. You what? That's right, lass. I don't know. The Whitcomb told me about you and Vicky. I didn't know what to do. I went to a bar. Had a couple, three, four, I don't know. That's all I remember. I wasn't very smart, Joey. Yeah, yeah, I know, Mr. Lassiter. I'm not very smart. Just a slap, happy jerk. Let you and a girl make a real schmo out of me. But you're not going to get away with it. Well, what are you going to do? I'm going to... Who's he? I told you, Mike Waring. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, what's he want? I wanted to talk to you, Joey, and so does Sergeant Corbett. Why don't you come along with me? What do you want to talk about? Vicky. Oh, that little... I don't want to talk about her. You don't have to talk, Joey. Wait till I get your lawyer. Huh? Lawyer? What for? They want to pin the murder on you, don't you understand? What murder? Vicky's. Vicky's? Has Vicky been... Didn't you know? Who did it? Hey, hey, let go. Who did it? I don't know. I, uh, well, that's enough, Joey. Stop it. Stay out of this, Mr. Weary. I will when I get you out of it. Now let him go. All right. Now let him go. What's the difference? Vicky's dead, huh? Want to talk about it? Got nothing to say. I think you better go see Sergeant Corbett just the same. Police? Yeah. Why not? Joey, Joey, you don't understand. I'll say you did let it. Let him say I don't care. Vicky's dead, huh? I don't know. Did I love her? Did I hate her? Come on, mister. All right, Joey. I'm not, Joey, wait. I'll see you later, Lassie. Well, at least don't say anything, Joey. Not until I get your lawyer. I'll get one down there right away. Ah, oh, that crazy jerk. How are you? I put down that phone lesson. Huh? Who are you? Ken Floyd, friend of Vicky's. Joey left the back door open, so I come in. What do you want? Save you the cost of a phone call and lawyer fee. Put down the phone. I, I got a call. I said put it, it down. Hey, oh, wait a minute. Be, be careful with that gun. All right, you be careful, too. Just do like I tell you. Yeah, I will. That's better. What do you want, Floyd? I told you to keep you from wasting your money. No use hiring a lawyer to protect somebody else's fighter, is there? I don't know what you mean. Joey signed with me. So you say, but you can't prove it without a contract. I got a it? contract. Yes, but it's not on record yet. All right, it will be. I don't think so. You and I are going down to your office. You're going to open up the safe. Wait a minute. Who are you working for? Whitcomb? <laughs> <laughs> I make it a point never to work for anybody except Ken Floyd. I figure your copies of the contract ought to be worth a nice piece of change to Whitcomb. 
So he can destroy him. Sign up Joey himself, that's oh, all. Oh, maybe Whitcomb won't be interested. There's a murder rap hanging over Joey's head. Now, you were ready to spend money on lawyers. I should think Whitcomb would be, too. And on the contracts. Joey's worth the risk. I see. How much do you expect uh, Whitcomb to pay for the contracts? What, do you want to top it? I might. Good. Good. I don't care who I deal with as long as the price is right. But there's no use peddling contracts until I got them, so let's get moving, Lassiter. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's the day after Ken Floyd took over Joey O'Hara's contract at gunpoint. He's put it up for sale, weighed his offers, and now he's closing the deal with the highest bidder. 800, 850, 900, 950, 1,000. All right, Whitcomb, that makes it an even 10 grand. Well, Floyd, now the contracts. Yeah. Here you are, Whitcomb. Good. That's what Lassiter gets for being a cheapskate. Now, first to get rid of these. Oh, here, use my lighter. Thanks. Well, there they go, up in smoke. That's a beautiful sight. But you're going to burn the table. No, no, I'll throw them in the grate. (laughs) And now that I can do business with Joey again, I'd better see how things are getting along. Well, there's no use my hanging around. So long, Whitkin. Goodbye, Floyd. Hello? Is that the Falcon? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Well, this is Walter Whitcomb. Mm-hmm. I understand you picked up Joey O'Hara. That's right. And do the police think he's guilty? They're not sure. Why? I find I made a mistake about him and Laster. I'm uh, in a position to deal with Joey after all, so naturally I'd like to see him cleared. Uh, according to the paper, he didn't tell the police anything damaging. He didn't tell them anything, period. So they were holding him until he felt in a more conversational mood. You say we're holding him. Does that mean he's been released? Not exactly. I'm afraid I have bad news for you, Whitcomb. What do you mean? Well, I just got word. Joey killed himself in his cell half an hour ago. Nine hundred, nine fifty, a thousand. Well, that does it, Lasseter, and even ten grand. All right, now let's have the contract, Floyd. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The photostats... They prove Joey signed with you. Uh Uh-huh. And now... uh, Just a second, Floyd. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, you again, Wary. Well, Lassiter, who's your friend? That's Ken Floyd. Oh, good. I've been wanting to meet him. You can ask me in. Looks like you're asking yourself that. What'd you come here for, Wary? Well, you were trying to protect Joey before because you figured to cash in on him. But now that he can't be of any more use to you... What do you mean, can't be of any more use to me? Now that he's dead... What? Yes, didn't you know? He killed himself. Floyd, did you know about this? Oh, Lassiter, so help What's Floyd got to do with it? Nothing wearing it. I'll settle with you later, Floyd. Uh, Maybe I will, too. But first, Lassiter, can you tell me anything about Joey you didn't tell me before? Wait a minute. How do I know this isn't a bluff about him being dead? Turn on the radio. You'll hear it on the news. Well, all right, Waring, so it's on the level, but what do you expect me to tell you about Joey? Anything that might tie him to the murder. Well, doesn't a suicide do it? Not entirely. And I've got a client to clear it. Well, I know Joey threatened Vicky, but that doesn't say he killed her. How do you know he threatened her? Well, she called me about four in the morning. Said he was banging on the door to her bedroom trying to get in. I had to go over and drag him away. Maybe he went back, but I don't know how you're going to prove it. Maybe we won't have to. There's a good chance... Hey, that... wait a minute. Well, where's Floyd? Huh? Well, looks like he slipped out the back way while we were talking. Hey, we've got to get him. He's got ten grand of mine. We'll get him. But first, we're going to headquarters. Why? To give Corbett our proof. But I told you I don't have proof. That Joey killed Vicky? I know that. But we have proof that you did. Huh? Yeah, sure, Lassiter. You killed Vicky. So let's go tell Corbett about it, hmm? Waring, there's just one thing I want to know. Why Lassiter killed Vicky? Well, I'll tell you, Corbett. He was using Vicky to work on Joey for him. But he found out that she was taking her work too seriously. She really fell for Joey, and Lassiter killed her in a jealous rage. No, that's not what I wanted to ask. Oh, you wonder how I knew that Lassiter was the murderer? Well, he said Vicky phoned him from her room at four in the morning. But the desk in her apartment house is closed from midnight to eight, 
and calls have to go through the desk, so she couldn't have phoned at four. Yeah, but th that's still not... Oh, I knew Lassiter was lying. He was trying to throw suspicion on Joey and at the same time explain what he was doing at Vicky's in case anyone saw him going there that night. All right, all right, Waring. But now will you just answer one thing? Oh, sure, Corbett. You told me you turned down the case, and still I find you involved with Joey, Lassiter, Whitcomb, and Floyd. Go ahead, explain that. Well, it's really very simple, Corbett. There's only one trouble. Yeah, what's that? You wouldn't believe me. So good night, Corbett. <laughs> Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Cora. Thanks for the call, but I can't make it tonight, Angel. I'm working on a case. Mm -hmm. Seems the fellow was disturbed in the middle of the night and didn't get any sleep. So by the next morning, he was dead tired. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the missing patient. It's late Sunday night as two figures move cautiously among the packing boxes piled in a darkened pier on the New York waterfront. The taller of the two figures carries a flashlight and runs its beam over the faces of the boxes as he moves slowly down the pier. Should be somewhere right along here, Decker. Yeah, but why, why don't we come to it? Patience, fellow, we will. Quinn, do you think there's a chance that maybe we made a mistake? Mistake? Warner Street Pier, Section E, cargo from the Golden Star. There's no mistake unless they made one at the other end. Yeah, but then, then we ought to come to it. Well, I have news for you, Decker. We have. Huh? Feast your eyes on that, fella. A beautiful little crayon cross. Lovely sight, wouldn't you say? This is it. This is it. Don't tell me. Well, look, look, let's get it open. Well, you have the crowbar, remember? Oh, yeah, Crane. Guess I'm kind of excited. Well, try to cons control yourself. We have work to do. I'll hold the light. Okay. Can you see? Yep. Yeah. <coughs> you only have to take off two boards. It's supposed to be right on top. Right. <coughs> All right. Now look out. I'll reach in. Okay. You got it? Just a second, fella. Yep. I have something. It's a bag. And it feels like... Here, you hold the light. Okay. I'll open it and pour out what's in it. Brother, look at them rocks. Well, Decker, looks like we've hit the jackpot. All in, you two. What? Crane. I'm behind this case. Quick, click off the light. Yeah. Come on out of there, both of you. What, what are we going to do? Sit tight and shut up. I thought we left that watchman gift wrapped. That's not the watchman, that's right. cops. If you don't come out, we're coming for you. What are we going to do? They got their light on us. I don't think they can see to the right of this box from where they are. Now, look, I'm going to try crawling over to that next row of boxes. If nothing happens, you follow. Okay. Oh, they can see. Yeah. They got you? In the shoulder, that's all. You're asking for it. Are you going to come out peaceful? All right, let's move in. Looks like they got us. No. Yeah. Let's stay low make a run the other way for the ship. Maybe I could, yeah. but you'll never make it. They winged you. I'll stay here. You go. Yeah, but Do what I say. If you're lucky, you can make the ship. That'll draw him off me. You still want it the hard way, fellas? He's close. All right, you get going while there's time. If you make the ship duck down behind the rail, they'll lose you. Run for the bow. There's a rope where she's tied up. You can slide down it, and you'll wind up near the car. You ought to be able to make the car before they realize what's happened. Yeah, but how about you? Maybe I can get away while they're after you. I'll keep the stone, so if they do catch up with you, you're clean. If they don't catch up, go to my place. I'll be there as soon as I see a doctor. I don't know, Crane. It may not work. It'll work. Now get going. But I... Go on. Okay. Hey, hold it! Oh, Carl, the door. Yes, I, I hear it. You want me to go? No, no, I'll go as... As soon as I find my slipper. Ah, uh, here. 
Coming, coming. Yeah? You the doctor? Yeah. Good, I'm the patient. Huh. So I see all that blood. Come right in here. Yeah. Sorry to disturb you this time of night, but it was an emergency. Well, no things happen. Accident? Not exactly. This was intended for me. A bullet. Oh. Well, sit right here. Right. Now, if we can get off this jacket, or you can't lift the arm. No, no. Well, here, I'll help you. Now, easy, easy, easy. We slip the jacket down. <coughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right, thanks. Now we see. Well, I have to tear the shirt. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm hmm. Is it very bad? Hmm. Not too bad. I think I can, with not too much difficulty, get it out. Yeah. Well, I'll get Elsa to help with the anesthetic. Oh, no, Doctor. No anesthetic. What? I want to know what's going on. Oh, it will hurt. An occupational hazard. I'm prepared for it. Well, as you wish. But I don't like to hurt. Shot of schnapps, perhaps. Thanks. If you let me watch you open a bottle, I don't want anything in it. <laughs> you are a very suspicious man. I have to be. I gathered that. You've already guessed how this happened to me? No, I haven't given it much thought. It's my job to cure people, not to judge them. I know it also happens to be your job to report any shooting. Oh, formality. The law requires I know what the I... law requires. We'll dispense with the formality. That's why I'm not going to be put to sleep. I want to be sure... Who's that? Elsa, my wife. Tell her to stay out of here. She could Tell assist. her to stay out. One minute, Elsa. It's all right, Elsa. The patient. I can take care of it. But don't you want me to help? No, 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 no. Go back to bed. Well, I'll put on some coffee. It'll be on the stove. Oh, all right. Thank you, Elsa. Oh, you shouldn't be so alarmed of Elsa. She wouldn't harm anyone. I told you I have to be careful. Here. Yeah. Is it worth it, I wonder? Worth what? Worry, fear, pain. I'm not complaining. Now, come on, how about getting to work? Yeah. Now we get to work. Carl, are you sure you don't need me? It's nearly three o'clock. How much longer are you going to be? Carl? Carl! Yes? Hello. Do I have the right apartment? Well, I don't know. What apartment do you want? Oh, oh excuse me. I'm looking for Michael Waring. He's a detective, sometimes called the Falcon. You have the right apartment. Come in. Oh, thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Well, are you the Falcon? Now, who did you think I am? Well, I, I wasn't sure. A friend, perhaps, a secretary or something. I, I mean... Well, I, I guess I expected someone, well, not quite so polished. Oh. <laughs> well, the polish is only skin deep, believe me. Underneath is a perfect example of a private eye. Nerves of steel, muscles of iron, and rocks in my head. <laughs> I suppose you tell me your name and we'll go on from there. Oh, yes. I'm Mrs. Carl Eberhardt. Mm -hmm. And just why do you want a detective, Mrs. Eberhardt? My husband has been murdered. Oh, I'm sorry. That comes easy, doesn't it? What? I'm sorry. Like, good day or how are you? Figure of speech. You didn't even know Carl. What do you want me to say? I'm being difficult, aren't I? You'll have to forgive me, Mr. Waring. It's been such a shock. We were so happy. Carl was a good man, kind. 
Oh, don't worry, Mr. Waring. I'm not going to break down. Oh, that's all right. Go ahead, if it'll make you feel any better. No, I've been through all that. I want you to find out who did this thing. Why not leave it to the police? They seem to have an idea I did it. They were quite unpleasant. Well, at least they didn't lock you up. Not yet. Why should they suspect you? Because they don't know whom else to suspect. Carl had no enemies. I told you he was a good man. Everyone who knew him liked him. Including you? Yes. But I'm considerably younger than Carl. I, I think the police hope to make something of that. Mm-hmm. They're looking for the other man in your life. Hmm? Yes. Is there one? You have the same sort of mind, I see. Well, if you mean one that considers all possibilities, yes. If I'm going to help you, I have to have the facts. You have them. I've told you the truth. All right. Then there's no triangle and your husband had no enemies. That's right. And you have no idea who might have killed him. Oh, but I do. What? I thought you said you didn't. Well, I, I don't know his name, but a man came in the middle of the night. Carl said it was a patient. Did you see him? No, no. He took him in the office. Well, after more than an hour, when Carl didn't come back to bed, I went in the office. Patient was gone. Carl was dead. Could it have been one of the regular patients? I don't think so, or Carl would have mentioned his name. Uh, total stranger, no connection with your husband, nobody saw him. Hmm. <sighs> I guess I'm asking the impossible, aren't I? It, maybe I, I'd be better forget the whole thing and let the police think what they want. Uh, no, Mrs. Eberhardt. I'll find the man for you. You really think you can? Yes, yeah, sure. Now, don't you worry. Everything is going to be all right, I promise. You know, Waring, even if I am on the police force, I'm homicide, not traffic. So if you get a ticket, don't expect me to fix it. <laughs> All right, Corbett, you don't like the way I drive? Get out. Well, aren't you a little ray of sunshine today? I offered to give you a lift to headquarters. Yes, Waring, so you could pump me about the Eberhardt case. Yeah, well, a lot of good it did me. I told you all we know, Waring. Yeah, which adds up to a big fat zero. You haven't any more on the missing patient than I have. If there is a missing patient. There is, Sergeant, you know there is. Oh, no, 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 Waring. Just because you stuck your neck out, don't expect me to follow. Look, I said I'd find that character for her, Corbett, and I will. More power to you. After all, there are only 10 million people in New York. That's right. So why couldn't at least one of them have seen this guy? Still assuming there is such a guy. Or why couldn't he have left a clue? Why isn't there something, one measly lead to his identity? Or why can't I keep my big mouth shut? <laughs> that wearing is the question. Promising Mrs. Eberhardt I'd find the guy when there's not a single thing to go on. <laughs> Don't worry. Just leave it to me. Everything is going to be all right. <laughs> you know something, Corbett? I must be nuts. Waring, for the first time in my life, I'm inclined to agree with you. In these days when we are building our military strength for the sake of our country's security, every American has a job to do. At present, the greatest reserve of manpower in our country lies in its woman power. There's an urgent need for women to assume their responsibilities as citizens by joining and serving in the military establishment as active partners of the men of our services. 72,000 enlisted men and women, officers are urgently needed, and especially in the nine women's services. If you are between the ages of 18 and 34 and are a high school graduate in good health without dependent children, one of these careers is open to you. You will learn a skilled job, and you will be given an opportunity to develop qualities of leadership and self-discipline. Help keep our nation free by enlisting now in the armed forces. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. A few days have passed since Mike Waring promised to pick a man out of nowhere. Now Mike has cooled off, gone to work on it, and he seems a little more cheerful as he enters Sergeant Corbett's office at headquarters. Hello, Corbett. You're well, wearing. You look a little more human today. For you, that's quite a feat. Uh, well, I'm feeling better, Corbett. 
What happened? Mrs. Eberhardt fire you? No, and I don't think she will. I hate to spoil your fun, Corbett, but I'm on the track of the missing patients. You don't say. Oh, I do say. I've been checking. Two fellas were spotted looting cargo on the waterfront the night of the murder. Yeah, yeah, I heard about it. Suspected of being part of a smuggling ring. <laughs> so what? So the two guys got away, but they were shooting. The cop who spotted them is sure he hit one. Oh, and you think... Eberhardt's isn't far from the pier, and if the fella had a bullet in him, he'd need a doctor. And then... He might want to shut the doctor up. Yeah, could be. But if the guys got away, you still don't know who they are. <laughs> you should keep in touch with the other departments, Corbett. Joey Decker was identified as one of the men. The one who got hit? No, the other one. They picked Decker up the next day. He denies any part of it. Denies he was ever at the pier. But he has no alibi, and they booked him. He's out on bail. Uh-huh. So if we could crack Decker... That's right, Corbett. If we can make him name his partner, I'm willing to bet we'll have our missing patient. So what are we waiting for? Who's waiting? Okay, Waring. Only this time I drive in a squad car. <laughs> Decker's in. Well, he wouldn't be if we announced ourselves, so we can only take a chance. Yeah. Well, now... We... Hey, sounds like trouble. Yeah, come on, Corbett. Yeah. Here's Decker's apartment. That's where it's coming from. Yeah. Decker! Decker, what's going on in there? Come on, Waring. We better try to break this door in. Yeah, all right. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Huh? They've stopped. Huh. Well, maybe now they'll answer. Come on in there. Open up. Oh. Who is it? Police. All right. All right, just a minute. Well, make it a short minute. wonder what was going on in there. Just a nice friendly argument. Well, if one of those friends doesn't open this door pretty quick, I'm still going to kick it in. Shh, shh, shh. I think somebody's coming. Well, what do you want? Catch oh. him, Waring. I've got him. Here, I'll drag him to this chair. <clears throat> There. Oh, brother, out cold. Yeah. The way his face is pushed out of shape, he wasn't playing solitaire. Yeah, which means that whoever did this is probably still in the apartment. I better have a look. Yeah, go to it, Waring. I'll see if I can bring this fellow around. Right. Hey, Corbett. Yeah, what is it? There's a back door and it's open. Whoever we're looking for has probably left. Well, he can't be far. Maybe you can catch him. Right, I'm on my way. <laughs> Homicide, Sergeant Corbett. Hello, Corbett. Where in, where in blazes are you? You've been gone 15 minutes. I went down the back way to the street. The fellow was just getting in a taxi, so I followed. Did he spot you? No, he went to the bus station on 34th and picked up a package from a baggage locker. Uh -huh. Then he went down to Penn Station. He's eating now at a lunch stand in the station. I'm calling from a booth where I can watch him. Are you sure he's the guy we're after? Well, he was at Decker's. His left arm's in a sling. Seems to add up. Well, stick with him. I've got an ambulance here for Decker... They don't need me, so where do I find you? Public phone where the operator's on duty. Long Island side, Penn Station. Uh, if I'm not here, that means our friend finished his meal and shoved off. Well, don't worry, Waring. I'll be there before his coffee cools. Still here? Hey, Corbett, you made it just in time. He left the stand. He's headed for the subway. Come on. Right. Hey, there he is. Passing the newsstand. The tall guy in the tan top coat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see the sling. What gets me, though, Waring, is how he could do the job on Decker with one arm out of commission. Well, I guess he can still hold a gun in his hand. That way he could keep Decker from fighting back and he could slap him around with his good arm. Uh, hey, going through the turnstile. Yeah, I thought he might. It's all right, I've got dimes ready. Let's hurry it up. We don't want him to hop a train that we can't catch. Right. All right, I'll put the dime in. Corbett, go on through. Okay. Over here, Waring. These are the stairs he took. Yeah. Hey, there's a train on the platform. Come on, quick. You see him, Corbett? Yes, he's getting in the last car. Hurry it up, Waring. The doors are closed. All right. Come on. All right, Waring, I've got the door. Come on, get in, quick. Get in. Oh, that was close. Oh. Hey, now I see his face. I know that guy. Yeah? He's Ernie Crane. I questioned him on another case. Uh-oh, he sees me. 
and he knows me. Look, he's pushing toward the back. That's all right. The doors are closed. He can't get out. He can't get out the back door to the tracks. Yeah. He's opening it. Come on. Excuse me, please. Uh, Let me get through here, please. Pardon me, please. Doggone it, he jumped at the train stop. Well, keep going before it picks up too much speed. I'm sorry, lady. I Let have him to get through. Here, Pardon me. Here. Here we are, Waring. But we're going pretty fast. Well, I made Mrs. Everhart a promise, so I'm keeping it so long, Corbett. Waring! No use, Crane. These openings in the tunnel wall make dandy foxholes so you and I can keep shooting it out until Corbett comes back with help. You're not getting anywhere. Why don't you give yourself up? Well, I guess that's my answer. What's the matter, Crane? Out of bullets? Well, here's where we get together, then. All right, Crane, stop fumbling with that clip. You should have known you couldn't get it in fast enough with that bum arm. Well, if I can't get it in a gun, maybe it'll do some good in your face. No, hey! No, you don't. You're not going anywhere. Let's go. I don't know what you're trying to prove, but you can't put up a fight with that arm. No, I told you. Now, why don't you quit? Uh, Look out! Uh, you tumble against that third rail, there's curtains for both of us. You're not taking me. Well, this is the way you want it. Here it is. Oh. All right, chum, now get up. Hurry up, there's a train coming. Oh, I can't. Well, here, I'll help you out. Now, hurry up. Oh, oh. Sorry, but if we don't move fast, come on, train. And I uh, just managed to drag him out of the way in time, Corbett. Yeah, good that you did, Waring. Treasury boys hoped to pump him about the smuggling outfit, and they couldn't very well if he was mangled. And I don't know how far they'll get. He doesn't seem to want to talk. He'll talk. And that package of rocks he had with him would do a lot of talking for him. A couple of diamonds in there the, the size of golf balls. Yeah, well, the main thing, as far as I'm concerned, is that I've proved Mrs. Eberhardt's story about the midnight visitor. Oh? Yeah, I'm calling her now to tell her the good news. Uh -huh. Hello? May I speak to Mrs. Eberhardt, please? What? When? I see. All right, thanks. No, goodbye. Well, how do you like that? Well, seeing as how I'm not a mind reader, I wouldn't know. How do I like what wearing? That was a nurse. Mrs. Eberhardt is unconscious. Huh? Yeah, seems she was beaten up this afternoon, too. American heritage of freedom is one of our most priceless possessions. Over a large part of the world today, totalitarian government has done away with many of the liberties we have in our country. Indeed, with the whole list of freedom given us by our Bill of Rights. Keep democracy strong and our American heritage intact by being an active citizen. Serve on school boards, jury panels, and in the government of your community. Keep yourself informed about national and international affairs. Combat racial and religious prejudice and all attacks on our liberties from whatever source. Don't be a lazy American. Work for your freedoms. It's the only way to keep them working for you. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Half an hour has passed since Mike Waring learned that Mrs. Eberhardt was beaten unconscious. He's gone to see her, and now she opens her swollen eyes. Is that you, Mr. Waring? Yes, Mrs. Eberhardt. Now, don't try to talk yet. Oh, I want to talk. I saw the man this time. I can give a description. Oh, good. I hope it fits the man we caught. Oh, you've caught him? Mm-hmm. Oh, we caught somebody. Now, if we can tie him to you, the whole thing will fit together. Well, this man was tall, wore a tan top coat. He mm -hmm. had a long face, long, sharp nose, thin lips, and his left arm was in a sling. Well, I guess that does it. Is it the same man? Yes. What did he want with you? Well, I'm not sure. It was so confusing. He said I knew, but I didn't. He held a gun in his left hand and, and hit me with his right hand. 
told me to talk. Said I killed Carl. You killed Carl? That's what he says. Did he mention the diamonds? Diamond? What diamond? Oh. Oh, maybe that's what he meant. Stones, he said. Something about stones. That could be diamonds. Yes, it could. But I... I don't understand. Carl didn't have any... No, it's all right, Mrs. Eberhardt. Don't try to talk anymore. Uh, but that man... Now, now, don't you worry about him. We've got him where we want him. And he had the diamonds on him, so that angle is taken care of. But the murder was another matter. However, now that you can identify him, I think we can take care of that, too. All right, now, Crane, are you going to talk or aren't you? I hate to disappoint you, Sergeant, but I can't think of a thing to say. Oh. Waring, I'd like to give this character a dose of his own medicine. He likes to rough up people. I don't think it's necessary, Corbett. The diamonds on him definitely tie him to the smuggling mob. That's right. And Mrs. Eberhardt's identification will tie him to Eberhardt. Uh-huh. And finally, his beating up Decker... Who's Decker? As if you don't know. Oh, you'd be surprised how many things I don't know, Sergeant. <laughs> You're too modest, Crane. Rizzo. Yes, Sergeant. Send Decker in. Right. All right, Decker, inside. Okay. What do you want with me, Sergeant? We have a friend of yours here. Huh? Him? Yeah. I don't know him. Uh, you don't know Crane? I never saw him before in my life. You mean he, he he's not the guy who did that job on your face this afternoon? I told you, I never saw him before. <laughs> Keep it up, Sergeant. You're doing fine. Well, you might have expected this, Corbett. Decker's been denying any part in the jewel smuggling. Naturally, he's going to deny any tie-up with Crane. Yeah. Still, I don't see why he's so worried about a smuggling charge when we've got a murder rap to hang on him. What's that, Warren? You heard me, Decker. You're the one who killed Dr. Eberhardt. I never even heard of a Doc Eberhardt. He's the Dr. Crane went to after the shooting on the pier. You must have followed him there. I didn't. I wasn't on the pier. I didn't go to the doctor's. The Crane must have passed out while the doctor was working on him. The doctor was going to phone the police. That's when you showed up. You killed him to keep him from calling the police. Well, you're crazy. Crane had the rocks. Crane went to the doctor's. Why do you try to drag me in? How do you know Crane had the rocks unless you were with him on the pier? Well, I mean, I... All right. So I was on the pier. Crane got me into it. But he took the rocks, and him and me split up. I didn't even see him again until this afternoon when he tried to scare me into shutting up about him. That's why he beat up on me. Hey, you little rat. Wait! Get it out, Wait. You. Wait. That's enough, Crane. Lay off. All right, Warren. Hang on Wait. the case. I've got Decker. All right. Hold on, you. Now that Decker's talking, Corbett, I think you can wrap up the case. You bet I'm talking. Crane took the rocks. That's right, Decker. And he killed the doctor. No, that's wrong, Decker. I still nominate you for that. So just keep talking and you'll prove it. Well, hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Waring. Come in. Thank you. Now, how do you feel today? Better, thanks. I hear you solved the case. Uh-huh. And I understand the man who attacked me wasn't the murderer. Oh, that's right. It wasn't Crane. It was his partner, Decker. But how did you know? Well, I was sure the murderer had the diamonds. Since Crane was looking for them, he obviously wasn't the murderer. I see. And he thought you might have them, but uh, you couldn't tell him anything, or he wouldn't have had to try Decker. That meant you weren't the murderer. And that leaves Decker. That's right. Crane was able to go directly to the diamonds when he left Decker, so Decker must have told them where they were. Mm-hmm. Well, I... I don't know how to thank you for clearing this up, Mr. Waring. Yeah, you hired me to do a job. I did it, that's all. And risked your life doing it. Don't minimize it. <laughs> Would have been a bigger risk if I hadn't. What do you mean? If I hadn't cleared things up after the promises I made, Sergeant Corbett would have razzed the life out of me. Good night, Mrs. Eberhardt. Case of the Gold Ring. The Case of the Gold Ring. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon when Mike Waring learns that those who deal in junk are sometimes paid off in lead.
The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Transcribed and produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Jerome Epstein, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon starred as the Falcon, with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. This is Fred Collins speaking. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Jane. I'm glad you called. No, you'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. I'm leaving for the Florida Keys. Mm -hmm. I need a vacation, and I'm going to get one if it kills me. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risked their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the gold ring. It is early afternoon in Havana, Cuba. And at the Continental, a sidewalk cafe near the Prado, a rather portly gentleman named Rafael Hernandez beckons to the waiter. But just as he raises an imperious finger... Rafael! Rafael! Oh, my dear Raymond, what a pleasure. Won't you join me? Listen, Rafael, I've got to talk to you. Of course, dear boy. What is it? I just got a line on Leela. Would you mind repeating that? I tell you, I know where she is. Where? She left Havana last night for the Florida Keys. She chartered a plane. How do you know? I spoke to the pilot. He happens to be a friend of mine. How fortunate. Have you any idea where she's staying? Yes. You got a look at her bags? They were marked for the Hotel Griselda. That is very interesting. <laughs> well, where do we go from here? Well... We can't leave a little girl like Leela alone on the keys. Why don't you fly over and keep her company? Oh, what about you? I'll stay in Havana until you call. I suggest you leave right now. Oh, but I, I haven't packed. Oh, but that's no problem, Raymond. All you need is one gun and six bullets. <laughs> that should take care of everything. <laughs> Hello, Leela. Raymond. How are you, darling? Listen, Ray, if you don't get out of here... I suppose you'll scream. Yes. <laughs> no, you won't either. You're not the hysterical type. Oh, really, darling, this is a horrible place. Whatever possessed you to stay here? <laughs> but then I suppose, like me, you had no choice. Is Hernandez with you? No. No, he's in Havana waiting for my call. He'll be ever so delighted to hear I've seen you. Look, Ray, I know what you boys want. Well, I should think so. I haven't got it. You're lying, sweet. All right, I am. But wouldn't I be a fool to tell you the truth? Well, you'd be a fool not to. How do I know after I turn it over you won't kill me? Oh, Leela, you know you can trust me. As much as you and Hernandez trust me. Exactly. Let me ask you something, Ray. What are you getting out of this? If I know Hernandez, he's not cutting you in for more than 10%. I don't think that concerns you. Suppose I promised you 50. Uh, what? Even split, right down the middle. But what about... Hernandez? He doesn't have to know. You can tell him I was gone when you got here. What do you say, Raymond? It's a lot of money. When would we divide? Right now. Well, then you do have it here. Yes, but you'll never find it without me, so make up your mind. If Raphael should learn of this, he'd cut my throat. You'll cut it anyway. <laughs> you know your trouble, Leela? You're a cynic. All right, get it. Wait a minute, what are you doing at that trunk? Part of it's in here, the false top. Where's the rest? Never mind. This should take care of your interest. Put that gun away. Oh, is that what it is? Are you going to put that gun away? Just as soon as you leave. Now, do you go quietly or do I shoot? <sighs> You're bluffing. I wouldn't advise you to call me, Raymond. I'm really loaded. You don't frighten me, darling. I'm warning you. Oh, don't be such a bloody little fool. Now, give me that. <gasps> oh, Right this way, Mr. Warren. I saved the best room in the house for you. Well, I appreciate that, Mr. Um... You just call me Ben. Okay, Ben it is. Here we are. Hey, wait till I flip on the lights. Well, 
What do you think? <laughs> well, if this is your best room, I'd hate to see the worst. Oh, you're judging by appearances. Uh, would you like me to turn on the fan? Uh, no, thanks. Huh? Okay. I'd like you to get me another room. Well, just between us, they're all alike. There's one thing about the Hotel Griselda. We don't show no favoritism. Oh, well, you had me worried for a while. Where does a glass door lead to? The balcony. But I wouldn't use it. There's a lot of mosquitoes out tonight. Oh, how romantic. Yeah, ain't it? Still, if you want me to open uh, it... No, don't bother. Oh, it wouldn't be any bother at all, Mr. Waring. I'd be pleased to do anything for you. Oh, what did I do to rate this service? Well, I read all about you. You're the one they call the Falcon. Uh, how do you know? Oh, I subscribe to all the detective magazines. Uh, I just finished reading about you and the Benson case. You know, there was one thing that puzzled me there. You know, there were a lot of things that puzzled me. Well, suppose you and I could get together when I'm off duty and sort of kick them around. <laughs> I got a couple of theories. Yeah, uh, well, I... save them for Einstein. Uh, how about some ice water? Hmm. Well, that raises a problem. Oh, you haven't any ice? Oh, sure we have. Only it'd melt by the time I got it up here. Well, that's just peachy. All right, here you are. Oh, thank you, Mr. Waring. And any time I can be of further service... I know, I won't call on you. Huh? Skip it. What? Open up. Wait a second. What are you doing on my balcony? Well, I could say I was taking a sunbath. At nine in the evening? I suppose it does sound far-fetched. Uh, only slightly. My name is Leela Gold... Well, I can't say this is a pleasure. I'm you don't a... have to tell me. I overheard. Oh, so you go in for eavesdropping, too. Well, I couldn't help myself. Funny how things turn out. If there's one man in the world I wanted to meet. It's me. How'd you know? It figured. Everyone does. Mr. Waring, you've got to help me. I'm in terrible danger. Oh, now, look, Miss Gold. Leela. Well, I'm here on a vacation. Well, this won't take much of your time. I wouldn't bother you, but there's nobody else I can turn to. Oh, well, now, look, I'll be I... forever in your debt. Well, I, uh, I don't think you can afford my prices. Don't try me. Hey, now, wait. <clears throat> what do you think? I think you've been seeing too many B movies. Where'd you get the idea you could bribe a private detective with a kiss? I'm sorry I lost my head. Yeah, well, it's a very pretty one. Uh, what's the problem? Then you will help? Mm-hmm. Well, actually, it's really very simple. There's a man registered here at the hotel named Raymond Spence. Raymond Spence? Didn't the room clerk mention something about him? I don't know, did he? Yes, he did. Seems that Spence's character was cleaning a gun this p.m. and accidentally shot himself in the shoulder. Oh. Well, Ray works for a man named Rafael Hernandez. Hernandez is due here tonight. I want you to meet him at the airport. What for? Well, how else can you kill him? I was going to what? It shouldn't be difficult. Hernandez won't be suspecting a thing. <laughs> you have been seeing too many movies. You won't do it? What do you think? Well, you, you don't understand. It's either Hernandez or me. Raymond was sent here to do the job. He wasn't wounded cleaning that gun. He tried to kill me. Come again? I was lucky enough to hit his arm. Did you report that to the local gendarmes? That wouldn't do me any good. The sheriff here works for Hernandez. What are you trying to give me? Honestly, it's the truth. So you see, you're the only one I can depend on. Here, here, well, wait a minute. Where are you going? Don't worry. I'll be back. Just as soon as you complete your end of the bargain. Till then, darling. Au revoir. Yes, sir? This is Mr. Hernandez in 212. Did you give my message to Raymond Spence? Yes, I told him you wanted to see him. But that was half hour ago. Ring his room again. Never mind, he's here now. Come in. Come in. Well, it's about... Oh, no! Go away. There's nobody home. Is that you, Mike? Who's this? Leela. Leela? Yes, I couldn't help calling you, darling. I think you're wonderful. Uh, well, I think so, too. I just heard the news. You did it for me. I did what for you? Well, I suppose it is stupid of me to mention, but I want you to know I'm forever in your debt. Huh? Good night, sweetheart. I'll see you in the morning. Hey, now, wait a minute. 
Oh, it must be the climate. I, this is the screwiest... What now? Come in. I'm uh, looking for Mr. Michael Ware. Oh, well, couldn't you find some other time to look? It must be 4 a.m. 4.15, to be exact. Mm. I'd like to introduce myself, sir. My name is William Bowers. I'm the local sheriff. Oh, well, I'm glad to know you, Sheriff. I was going to look you up tomorrow morning. Wasn't it nice of me to save you the trip? You know a Mr. Hernandez? You mean Rafael Hernandez? Yeah. No. And funny you should know his first name. Oh, it's not so funny. A young... Wait a minute. What happened to him? He was murdered a couple of hours ago. Murdered? Oh, I'm surprised you didn't hear the commotion. Well, I'm a sound sleeper. You walk in your sleep? What are you getting at? You recognize this? Where'd you find that gun? Right next to Hernando's body. Of course, if I were one of your big city cops, I would have immediately deduced it was yours. But being just a yokel, I had to call the New York police first. But how did my gun wind up near Hernando's body? Now, that's a good question. I just hope you find time to think up an answer before we hang you. If I were you, sir, I'd start working on it right now. Recently, in one of our largest cities, a survey of public elementary schools revealed conditions which are difficult to believe. These conditions are robbing our children of the educational opportunity they deserve. Inadequate school budgets, outdated equipment, and old-fashioned methods may deprive your child of the chance for a good start that is the right of every American. It's up to parents to know what their local schools are like and to demand the elimination of all these bad features. Get busy in your local PTA and other civic groups to make sure that the children of your town are getting a square deal in school. Remember, America's future lies with its children. Now, back to The Adventures of the Falcon. Just a few seconds have passed since Mike Waring was invited by Sheriff Bowers to try the local jail for size. And surprisingly enough, Mike isn't flattered by the honor. Now, look, Sheriff, you've got this all wrong. Oh, I'm sure I have. But after all, what can you expect from a hick cop? Well, I tell you, I didn't kill Hernandez. I never even met the man. When I came to my room last night, there was a girl on my balcony. Shades of Romeo and Juliet. Now, look, I'm not clowning. Her name is Leela Gold. She wanted me... Oh, well, what's the use? You wouldn't believe it. Well, try me. I'm pretty gullible. Well, she wanted me to gun Hernando's for her. And you were blind? Now, don't talk like a chump. Well, why did she pick on you to play assassin? She heard Ben, the room clerk, mention that I was a private detective from New York. And that convinced her you wouldn't hesitate to commit murder. Well, I can't help it if she's crazy. Crazy or not, the fact remains Mr. Hernando's is dead. Well, I didn't gun him. Now, you've got to give me a chance to clear myself. I wish I could, but unfortunately... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see that gun again. What for? Because it isn't mine. The New York Police Department... Yeah, well, I that... tell you, it isn't mine. I ought to know. Mine had a nick on the barrel. For a previous victim? Look, I'll even show you where it was. Let me have it. You see, I was right. All right, Sheriff, get him up. Oh, now, Mr. Waring, really, you're violating the confidence. Well, I guess I can't be trusted. All right, in that closet. You going to lock me in there? What do you think? I think I'll never trust another Yankee. Now, come on, come on, quit stalling. As you will, sir. Sorry to do this, Sheriff, but after all, turn about is fair play. You were going to lock me up. And I still will. So make the most of your fun, Mr. Waring. At the moment, I'm your guest, but I hope to play host to you shortly. Hey, Ben. Ben! Window? It's me. Well, I don't care if it's... Oh, Mr. Waring. Yeah, you got anybody in there? Well, no, but how did you know where I live? I'm a detective, remember? They call me the Falcon. Open up. Oh, just a second. Well, come on, hurry up. Someone could pick me off in that light. Okay. Thanks. Well, what do you hear from Sheriff Bowers? Oh, he's awful peeved at you. Yeah, I can imagine. Now, listen, Ben. You've got to give me a hand. I wouldn't dare. Don't let Bowers fool you, Mr. Waring. He may look like a fat fool, but he ain't. Well, I'm sure of it. That's why I need your help. Uh-uh. 
You don't believe I killed Hernandez. Well, after all, it was your gun. It was in my grip. Anyone could have stolen it. I was dead to the world after my ride down here. Well, still and all... You don't believe me, huh? Okay, so I'm a killer. So what do you think your chances are? You could give me away. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't. I swear. All right, then prove it. Get hold of Miss Gold. Sir? Leela Gold. I want you to bring her here. There's the little lady who holds the key to the whole puzzle. If you say so. Well, I say so. Now, on your way. But if the sheriff finds out... Who's going to tell him? Oh, he's a funny man, Mr. Waring. He's got ways of learning things. Now, now, forget it. You put yourself in my hands, I'll make you a big man. I put myself in your hands, and you're liable to make me a dead one. Well, any way you will have lived. Now, get going. Miss Gold. Miss Gold. I, I just want... Hello, Ben. Oh, I'm Sheriff Bowers. Uh-huh. Well, I, I, I was looking for Miss Gold. I am, too. Maybe we can join forces. Well, really, Sheriff, I... What's just... the matter? You're off duty now. Well, yes, yes, but... Yeah, uh... but what? Well, I just remembered something. I did, too. Sit down, Ben. Well, well really, Sheriff... You don't want to antagonize me, do you? No. I'm a friend of yours, remember? Did I say anything a couple of years ago when I caught you running the still? You were breaking the law, and I looked the other way. But you don't understand. No, I don't. Suppose you enlighten me. Squat. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. What do you want with Leela Gold? Well, I, I, I just wanted to know if, if her room was comfortable. Let's face it, Ben. No one's ever been comfortable in these rooms. Look at it. It's a shame and a disgrace. Holes in the screen, broken water pitches. What must your guests think? But then they're not too fussy, are they? I resent that. Well, it's true. What do you suppose keeps the same people coming back time after time like that Mr. Hernandez and Raymond Spence? Well, I don't know. Well, uh, do you know why Miss Gold honored you with her presence? No. What do you want with her? Well, I told A you. A pack of lives. Mike Waring sent you for it, didn't he? Well, honest, sir. Where is he? At your place? I didn't say that. No, but it figured. What are you going to do? I can't tell rightly. First, I got to find out what Mr. Waring has in mind. You going to pick him up now? No. No, let's give the man a little more rope. If he's going to hang himself, he might as well do a neat job. I hate loose ends, don't you? <laughs> Yes, ma'am, what'll it be? I'll have a daiquiri. Better make it two. Ray. Well, go on, waiter. Yes, sir. Listen, Ray, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to shoot you. Oh, of course you didn't, Leela. I've been thinking over what you suggested yesterday. What I suggested? A partnership. <laughs> You're forgetting, darling. That was your suggestion. Well, anyway, with Hernando's gone. Poor Raphael. Who do you suppose killed him? It was Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Private detective from New York, the Falcon. Funny. I never heard Raphael mention his name. Oh, it's true. I tell you, he came down here just to see Hernando's. And how do you know that? Waring told me. I don't believe it. You think I'd lie to you? No, <laughs> darling, you wouldn't recognize the truth if it slapped you in the face. Ray, you've got to trust me. Well, that would be rather stupid, wouldn't it? I trusted you once and wound up with my arm in a sling. I told you I didn't mean it. I was rattled. You see, I was expecting wearing. Why? Well, he and I are partners. He came down here to meet me. Make up your mind. Did he come here to see you or Hernandez? Both. I turned the stuff over to him. Oh, you're such a bloody little liar. Yes, you're right, I am. But this time I'm telling the truth. Waring's got it. He might at that. The sheriff's looking for him. Well, that proves it. Where's Waring now? I don't know. Well, if he's your partner, you must expect to hear from him. I tell him. you, I don't... Miss Gold! What? I think you're being paged, darling. Over here, boy. I, I, I gotta talk to you, Miss Gold. Well, go right ahead. Well, this is confidential. I'll see you later, Ray. Now, darling, we don't have secrets from one another. All right, then, let's have it. Well, I, I don't know. Well, I do. Now, what is this message you have for my charming associate? Well, Mike Warren wants to see her. He does. Now, do you believe we're partners? Where is he? Well, he's, uh, he's hiding out at my place. I got a shack near the swamps. Suppose you take me there. But he wanted to see the lady. I wouldn't think of it. Well, you know how people talk. Now, you better take me, and uh, he won't be disappointed. <laughs> I'll provide him with a much more exciting evening. <laughs> Who's there? 
I'll answer in, you dummy. It's me, Mr. Warren. Ben. Did you bring her in? Yes, sir. Just a second. Hello. Who the devil are you? I'm sorry, Mr. Warren. I couldn't help myself. But you can now. So run along. Yeah, but I want to explain. Well, I'll do it for you. <laughs> nice boy. Yeah, but not very bright. Yeah, for that matter, who is? Well, you must be Raymond Spence. Now, how in the world did you ever figure that out? Leela told me about you shooting yourself this afternoon. Now, don't you believe that she was responsible? <laughs> really? You picked yourself a horrible associate, Mr. Waring. You can't believe a word she said. Yeah, I'm beginning to find that out. Oh, incidentally, would you mind pointing that gun elsewhere? Does it make you nervous? Yes, very. I'm in a delicate condition. Congratulations. But um, getting back to Leela, she tells me you two are associated in this venture. You believe that? Strangely enough, I do. After all, you did send for her. Yes, because I'm being framed for murder. This poor Raphael. I'm going to miss him. Look, I don't know why I should try to convince you, Raymond, but I didn't kill him. Have you any idea who did? Well, Leela tried to get me to do the job when I turned her down. You think she did it herself? Isn't that the way it adds up? Well, frankly, I'm not too sure. Well, you better be. We've got a pretty sharp sheriff in these parts. Oh, he couldn't be too sharp. He let you escape. No, we all make mistakes. And you made yours when you tied up with Leela. Now, I'm prepared to offer you a much better deal. Leela claims she turned the stuff over to you. Oh, is that what she claims? Well, don't you have it? I'll tell you a proposition first. Well, it would be pointless discussing anything unless I'm dealing with a principal. Don't worry, you are. I've got the stuff. What do you think of it? Not much. Well, it's worth a hundred grand. I doubt it. Look like a lot of junk to me. Look, I know all of Hernando's contacts. I can unload it tomorrow for that price. Well, that's good to know. I'll call you if I ever run across it. But you just said... I know, I lied. I must have picked up the habit from Leela. You know, Mr. Waring, I'm very annoyed at you. You tricked me. Yeah, well, don't feel too badly about it. That makes you even with the sheriff. Only I don't propose to take this lying down. Well, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. But uh, to begin with, see how this hits you. Our American heritage of freedom is one of our most priceless possessions, but because we often take them for granted, we're not as vigilant in our defense of them as we must be. Combat racial and religious prejudice and all attacks on our liberties from whatever source. Don't be a lazy American. Work for your freedom. It's the only way to keep them working for you. And now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Thirty minutes have passed since Raymond Spence showed his displeasure with Mike Waring by beating a tattoo on his head. Now, as we find Mike... Come on, Waring, take a swig of this. It won't hurt you. Confidentially, I made it myself. Oh, Sheriff Bowers. Go on, go on, take a good pull. All right. Oh, brother, that's awful. Ain't it? <laughs> Took me 20 years to get used to it. Oh. How did you know I was here? Uh, ben told me. Oh, he's just a great big blabbermouth. Well, he? we all have our force. Now, personally, I trust the wrong people. Uh, like me, for example. Like you, for example. I thought you were real smart. I thought you were going to solve this thing for me. Huh? Well, <laughs> I hate work. You can't imagine what it's like dragging 220 pounds around in this sun. And you let me escape on purpose? Naturally. Uh, I don't believe it. Where's your gun? In my coat. Get it. Go on. Well? Pull the trigger. What? Go ahead, shoot. I want to see how good a marksman you are. Aim at my cigar. Are you nuts? <laughs> I got confidence in you, boy. Okay. It's empty. Uh-huh. And you did let me escape, huh? Of course. What was the idea? I told you. I thought you were smart, but I'm real disappointed. I wouldn't be surprised if I had to do my own work. Oh, heaven forbid. <laughs> kind of depressing, ain't it? <laughs> well, still can't be helped. It was Raymond Spence who slugged you, wasn't it? Yes, he thought I was holding out on him. Holding out what? Some mysterious it that he and Leela keep referring to. Have you any idea what uh, it is? Yes, I think so, Sheriff. But Leela would know better. What say we drop in on her? Seems like years since I've seen the girl. Uh, 
How do you want to handle this? How would you suggest? Well, I say we knock and walk, walk right in. Oh, why bother knocking? There's no reason to disturb the young lady. And where'd you get those keys? Ben wasn't using them, so I thought I might as well. <laughs> Never mind. It isn't locked. Is that you, Leela? Oh, sorry to disappoint you, Raymond. Waring. Uh huh. This is Sheriff Bowers. No need to introduce us. Boy, we've already met. Hi, Mr. Spence. Hi. We thought this was Leela Gold's room. How come we made such a stupid mistake, Waring? I don't know. I would have sworn this was 209. Uh, uh, but it is. Uh, fancy that. I, I was just waiting for Leela. Uh-huh. Oh, good. We'll do it together. You, uh, you gentlemen know any three-handed games? Yeah, I know a couple. How about 20 questions? Sounds wonderful. Want to play, Raymond? No, thanks. Oh, well, maybe it's just as well. He don't look like he'd be very good at games. He's kind of puny. Oh, don't sell this boy short, Sheriff. He's a real live one. What do you mean? Why do you suppose Rafael Hernandez was killed? I have no idea. Well, you should. It was over that mysterious consignment that Leela was carrying. The one who killed Hernandez wanted it. Well, then Leela killed him. No, 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 you're not listening. I said whoever killed Hernandez wanted it. Leela had it all along. So who does that leave? Who? You. Of course, it took Leela to give you the idea, but uh, don't worry, Raymond. I'll personally see to it she gets credit for the assist. I don't know what to say, Mike. I don't know how you can ever forgive me. Personally, I find it very easy, Leela. You're a very attractive young thing. When I think of how I involved you... Oh, forget it. You didn't really believe I meant for you to kill Hernandez. No, of course not. I was just talking. Yeah, that's the trouble with you, Angel. You talk too much. And this time, Raymond was paying attention when you sold him the idea of double-crossing Hernandez. Struck him as a good one. Seemed a wonderful way to go into business for himself. Then he only had to take care of you. But I outsmarted him. Mm-hmm. He should have realized you were no one to play around with. Oh, well, incidentally, uh, what are you going to do with it? It? Yeah, the mysterious consignment that was responsible for the whole mess. Do you know what it is? Sure, narcotics. The three of you were part of a ring to smuggle it into the U.S. How'd you guess? It wasn't a guess. I had a hunch all along. And it was confirmed when I talked to Raymond. I told him it looked like a lot of junk to me. When he let the word junk go unchallenged, I knew I was on the right track. I don't understand. Ah, sure you do, Angel. You're an old hand at this game. Junk is the all-embracing term for narcotics. Listen, Mike, I know where I can sell the entire shipment. It's pure stuff. We can get 40000 for it easy. I'll cut you in for half. <laughs> As you ever learn, Angel? Hmm? It's time you told the truth for once. That shipment's worth a hundred grand. Ray told me. Just can't trust you. Oh, yes, you can. No, nope, I'm afraid not. I swear, Mike, this time... Why did you stop here? Well, such a lovely night. Thought we ought to make the most of it. Did you ever see a lovelier moon? Oh, darling. Look at the way it rises over that building. That's a picture no artist could paint. Haven't I seen that building before? Well, if you haven't, you'll see a lot of it in the future. That's the local jail. Why, you know no No, good... no, no, no. There's no need to take offense. I just want you to try some of Sheriff Bower's southern hospitality. Let's go, Angel. The Case of the Natural Seven. The Case of the Natural Seven. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon when Mike Waring learns that sometimes loaded dice can do more damage than a loaded gun. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon. This program came from New York. This is Fred Collins speaking. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Kathy. I'm glad you called. Oh, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I've got to see a man about a gambling debt. Mm-hmm. Some boy I know tried to make a seven the hard way and discovered murder was a natural. 
Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the Natural Seven. It is late evening in New York. And at Frenchy Devlin's, a gambling house in the East 70s, a young man named Steve Richards is conducting an interesting experiment. Steve's trying to get a pair of ivory cubes to come up the right way. Come on, Dice, don't be good to pop. All I want is one little natural. Eight is the point, eight. Get your bets down, gentlemen. Get your bets down. All right, Point let's is make eight. it the hard way. Two little Coming fours out. will do it. Six and a three. A six and a three. The point is still eight. Place your bets. Eight from the cage. Come on, Dice. Now oh, show them. Seven a loser. Pay the line. Well, I guess this isn't your night, Mr. Richards. Who's next? Next Wait, better, wait a minute. What about one more roll? Huh? Have to wait your turn. Oh, it's okay with me, Nick. Let him shoot. Thanks, fella. Let him shoot. I tell you what I'll do. I'll roll you one time for five thousand. Oh, what do you say? Sorry, Mr. Richards. There's a five hundred dollar limit at this table. But you got to give me a chance to get even. What you don't seem to understand is that I just work here. I don't make the rules. Well, where's the boss? Well, he was here just a. In... Oh, uh, Mr. Devlin. Mr. Devlin. What's the trouble, Nick? There's no trouble. This gentleman would like to see you. What kind of a place do you call us anyway? I thought this was supposed to be a gambling house. Well. Well, where's your sporting blood? Nick tells me I can't bet more than five hundred dollars. That's not rich enough for your blood? No, I want to shoot 5,000. One roll? Yeah. Well, that raises a peculiar point, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't believe I caught your name. It's Richards, Steve Richards. All right, Mr. Richards, you're faded. I uh, give him the dice, snack. Well, I, uh, I take it back, Frenchie. You're a sport. Thanks. Come on, dice. Be good to Papa just one time. Four is the point. All right, little Joe. Let's do it. Seven a loser. Satisfied now, Mr. Richards? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied. I think you need a drink. No, I'm all right. I'm... I insist. After all, you're my guest. But I tell you, I don't need Just it. follow me. Are you a native of New York? Yeah. I don't believe I ever saw you at the club before. Now, this was my first trip. I do hope it won't be your last. I'll write in here. Now for that drink. Oh, please don't bother. I, I never touch the stuff. I suppose you don't smoke either. No, no, I don't. Model young man. How wonderful. Oh, uh, do you have your own check or would you like a blank? Huh? In case you've forgotten, you just lost $5,000 to me. Naturally, I assumed we were playing for cash. Look, Frenchie, there's, uh, there's something I gotta tell you. You don't have the money. No. Well, that's very embarrassing. I don't know what possessed me. I thought if I won, maybe... But you didn't. Well, those are the fortunes of war. Still, you must appreciate my position. If I lost, you would have expected to collect. I'm not trying to excuse myself. Well, you needn't worry, Steve. I may call you Steve. I'll take your IOU, payable in ten days. My IOU? Yes. I've got an idea you make good. Well, I'm afraid I can't. I haven't got a prospect in the world. Still, I think you'll pay off. Want to bet? <laughs> I got a gun that says I'm right. Forty-six left. Thirty-two right. Twenty-four left. And it should do it. Who's there? I said, who's there? You better come out from behind that safe. All right, Mr. Get him up. What? You heard me. Get him up. Wait a minute. I'm not waiting for anything. Now raise him before I plug you. I know you from someplace. You're out of your mind. Still, I'd like a look at you without that mask. I bet you would. Now, you're going to raise your Steve hand. Steve Richards, isn't it? What? Sure, I thought I recognized your voice. Now, have you gone crazy, Steve? You're the one who's crazy. Who's this Richards guy, anyway? A man who works for me. Well, I never heard of him. Then how'd you know the combination of the safe? 
And you've been in this racket as long as I have, Morgan. How you... did you know my name was Morgan? Well, I can read, can I? It's on a door. It won't wash, Steve. Now, look, if you're in trouble... Just get back. I mean it. If you're in a jam, I'll help you. Now, but don't be a fool. You'll never get away with this. I'd like to see someone stop me. I know it's you, Look, Steve. I ain't gonna argue with you. You're just plain screwy. Well, there's one way to find out. Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan, I didn't mean it. I swear I didn't. You gotta believe me. You gotta. Who's there? Who's there? Richard Hamlin. Well, can you come back later? I'm afraid not. All right. All right, just a second. Hello, Steve. Hello. You remember Nicky Zale? Sure he does. What do you guys want? It uh, probably slipped your mind, but I hold your IOU for 5000 by an odd coincidence, it's due today. Well, I can't make it good. I'm surprised to hear that, Steve. Especially after what I read in the papers this morning. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't you work for Alfred Morgan? Yeah. Well, it seems he played host to a masked burglar last night and got shot for his pain. Well, what's that got to do with me? Well, I was just putting two and two together. Now, if you were the thief... I wasn't. I'm merely assuming... But if you were, then of course you'd have my money. I wasn't a burglar. I think you were. Did Morgan say so? No. He claims he didn't recognize the man, but I've got a hunch he's lying. Why should he? To protect you. A form of noblesse oblige. Well, you're wrong. Why are your bags packed? Well, I, uh... I, I was just going away on a little vacation. At a time when Mr. Morgan needs you most? That's not nice, All Steve. right, all right, Frenchie. I'll tell you the truth. That'd be a welcome check. I was the burglar, but I didn't take a dime. After I shot Morgan, I beat it. Well, that wasn't very bright. As long as the damage was done... I tell you, I didn't take a penny. I think you're lying. I don't care what you think. Well, perhaps not. But Nick does. All right, Nick. Come on, punk. Where's the dog? <laughs> Where is it? Let me alone. I'll let you alone. I'm going to get that dough if I have to break every bone in your body. And frankly, fella, that's just the way I'd like it. All right, Steve, take a slug of this. Go on, go on. Good for what ails you. Who are you? Mike Waring. Wait, you're Mike Waring? I'm a private detective. You know the one they call a fork? Want to bet? What are you doing here? Al Morgan sent me around. Morgan? Yes, you plugged him last night. No, I didn't. Now, cut it out, Steve. He recognized you. Yeah, well, I guess I might as well admit it. You might as well. I suppose you come to arrest me, huh? No, Morgan doesn't want that. He figures you wouldn't have tried to tap the safe unless you were in a jam. You mean... Mm -hmm. he... He's not going to prosecute. <laughs> Talk about turning the other cheek. I'll make it up to him. I swear, Mr. Waring, if it's the last thing I do... Well, never mind the promises. What happened here? I was beaten up. That I can see for myself. Who did it? Frenchy Devlin. I'll kill him for this. Don't talk like a fool. What prompted Frenchy? Huh? He must have had a reason. I gave him an I.O.U. Oh, so that's why you tried your hand at safe cracking, huh? I must have been crazy. I won't argue the point. What are you going to do? Well, Morgan's willing to forgive and forget. Let's see if I can prevail upon Frenchy Devlin to do likewise. Yes? Hello, Mrs. Devlin. Do I know you? No, I don't think so. My name is Mike Waring. Well, how did you know I was Mrs. Devlin? I'm a detective. I beg your pardon? Well, I came up here to see Frenchie, and you opened the door, so I made a suitable deduction. Oh, remarkable. No, no, elementary. 
May I come in? Please do. Where's your husband? Out. Let me take your coat. But you said Frenchie wasn't home. That's why I'd like to see you comfortable. Aren't you a friend of his? No, not particularly. As a matter of fact, I can't stand the guy. Uh, 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 careful, Mr. Waring. You must remember I'm his wife. Well, I don't imagine you work too hard at it. Oh, but I do. Can I get you a drink? No, thanks. Just tell Frenchie to lay off Steve Richards if he knows what's good for him. Pardon? He'll understand. Oh, you're not leaving. Oh, but I am. Why not leave your card? If Frenchie doesn't get back to you, maybe I will. Who's there? It's only me, June. Hello. You sound disappointed. Maybe I am. You don't want to talk that way, darling. You give people wrong ideas. I give half a kiss. Will you stop pawing me? You're not that fussy with other people. Hmm? Why discriminate against me? What are you hinting at? You must think I'm blind. Well, I'm not lover. I know what's going on. You're crazy. Come here, baby. I want to show you something. Frenchie, I'm warning you. Stay away from me. Or uh, you'll do what? I mean it. Stay away from me. Frenchie! Oh. Frenchie! You have a lot of driving to do between now and spring, and some of it will be made more difficult by bad weather. That means extra caution on your part to avoid an accident. A little extra attention to the rules of driving safety will help you to avoid an accident that could spell tragedy for you, your family, or friends. First of all, be sure that your car, especially the brakes and tires, is in perfect condition before you start. And have tire chains handy in case you need them. Second, drive slowly. Third, watch the traffic signals and obey them. And fourth, signal for all stops and turns. Guard against traffic accidents this winter. Drive carefully for your life. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Two hours have passed since Frenchy Devlin was murdered... And now at police headquarters, the distraught widow pours out her version of the affair in the sympathetic ears of Sergeant Corbett. Oh, now, now, Mrs. Devlin, I know how you feel, but you, you, you've got to be brave. I'll try. That's the ticket. Oh, Sergeant, you're so understanding. I never dreamed a policeman could be so nice. <laughs> well, we, we're not the monsters people think. <clears throat> now, is there anything else you can tell me? No, no, it all happened so quickly. Frenchie had just walked in. He didn't even have time to take off his coat when the killer fired. Did you get a look at him? Just a peek. He seemed to be about your size. Well, was he stocky or thin? I couldn't say for sure. Well, now, you're not giving us much to go on. Well, if you're going to press me, I'd say it was thin. Oh, and I think of poor Frenchie. Now, 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 Mrs. Devlin... I'm sorry. Uh, would you happen to know if your husband had any enemies? Oh, no. No, everybody loved him. He... Well? I almost forgot. A man was around today and threatened him. Who? No, wait a minute. I think I've got his card in my purse. Yes. Mike Waring. Do you know him? Yes, very well. All right, Mrs. Devlin, you go on home. I'd like to escort you, mm -hmm. but I have a call to make. Just a second. Hello, Mike. Hello, oh, Sergeant Corbett. Yeah, long time no see. Uh, it must be at least two weeks. <laughs> uh, what brings you to this neck of the woods? This. That looks like one of my business cards. It is. You remember handing any out today? No. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah? Yeah, I gave one to June Devlin to pass on to her husband. Was there a threat attached? What are you getting at? Well, brace yourself for a shock, kiddo. Frenchie was murdered. Once more? Well, you heard me the first time. 
He was gunned at 4.30 this afternoon. Who did it? That's the question of the day. What gave with you two? Oh, it's a long story. Well, that's okay. I got loads of time. All right, hold on to your hat, because it gets a little involved. You know Al Morgan? Oh, the guy who was gunned by a burglar last night? Mm-hmm. Well, Morgan's a friend of mine. The boy who shot him was Steve Richards. Hey, look, if you've been holding out on no, me... No, no, don't go off half-cocked. There's nothing else I could do. Morgan won't prosecute. Why not? Because Steve works for him. Seems the kid was in a jam. He needed money. Well, who doesn't? Where does Frenchie fit into this? Now, Steve owed Frenchie the dough on a gambling debt. When the kid couldn't pay off, Frenchie and Nick Zale took it out of his hide. So you went over to ask Frenchie to lay off. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. Yeah. Well, personally, I thought it was kind of dull. Well, that's because you're too close to the picture. What's this Steve Richards look like? <laughs> it's pretty hard to say. His own mother wouldn't know him after the workout Frenchie and Nick gave him. See about my size? Why? Because Mrs. Devlin got a fast look at the killer. According to her, he was about five foot nine and on the thin side. Does that fit Steve Richards? Fits a million people. Yeah, Mike, but we don't have a million suspects. Now let's go see what this one has to say about it. Mike, I don't know anything about it. It's all Greek to me. You sure you haven't budged from this room since I saw you? No. I don't believe it. It's all right, Sergeant. I don't blame you. I behaved like a first-class jerk. Well, you certainly have. And wouldn't I be a fool to jeopardize everything after Morgan gave me another chance? How did you wind up in Frenchie's club in the first place? And don't tell me you needed money for your mother's operation. No, it's even more obvious than that. I, I thought I could get something for nothing, so I pulled out every dime I had in the bank and tried my luck. It wasn't very good. Well, I guess I'm the kind of guy who has to learn the hard way. Yeah. Well, Mr. Waring, where do we go from here? Oh, I don't know about you, Sergeant, but uh, I've got an idea. I'll let you know how I make out. Hello, Mrs. Devlin. Well, if it isn't the bad penny. Mm -hmm. Come in. I understand I'm indebted to you. How so? Didn't you give my card to Sergeant Corbett? I thought you might like some publicity. No, not me. I'm the modest type. Corbett tells me you uh, saw the man who killed your husband. Well, not exactly. Well, you got a close enough look so you'd recognize him if you saw him again. I think so. Mm -hmm. Would you mind describing how it happened? I told the sergeant. Well, now, tell me. Well... Frenchie had just come in. He was going over to the bar to pour himself a drink. Mm -hmm. Just then, the door behind him opened. Where were you during all this? Sitting right there on the sofa. <laughs> you're lying, Angel. <laughs> what? I said you're lying. Look at the layout of this room. Well? well? Your sofa's right next to the door. And the way the door is hinged, if you were sitting where you claim, you couldn't possibly see anyone behind it. You're crazy. If you'd like me to demonstrate? If I did, I wouldn't have you work on the door. Look, Mrs. Devlin. June. The police suspect my client of killing your husband. Your client? Yes, Steve Richards. So? So Steve's allergic to chairs, particularly those wired for sound. It's my job to keep him out of it. For which you get paid? That's right. If I'm not too personal, what are your rates? I get $100 a day plus expenses. Oh, that's no money for a man like you. Suppose I could triple it. What would I have to do to earn it? Just, um, keep me company. Or wouldn't I be in the way when your other friends came to call? What other friends? <laughs> oh, Angel, gal like you must have millions. How about Nicky Zale? What? Well, with Nick working for Frenchie, it would have been so convenient. How dare you? It's a mighty... Nice right you got now there. Now, get out. All right, Angel. And I'll be back. I never could resist strong women. Hello? Nick, is that you? Yeah? June. You got rocks in your head. What's the idea of calling me up? Now, hang up. Nick, I've got to see you. I told you to hang up. This wire may be tapped. Look, you don't understand. Mike Waring was just here. He doesn't believe that story I gave the police. What he thinks doesn't bother me. Well, he knows about you. 
Who told him? I don't know. He must have guessed. You don't guess about things like that. Nick, you shouldn't have killed him. What did you say? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. I don't like that kind of talk. Oh, look, I apologize, didn't I? What are you going to do about wearing? You've simply got to All do All right, some... June, I got the message. Now relax. I'll give it my immediate attention. Buddy. Buddy. Me? Yeah. Cover you for a match? Yeah, sure, I got one. Well, if it isn't Nicky Zale. Small world, ain't it? Yeah, too small. I want to talk to you. Sure, let's go to my place. Why bother? I got a car parked in the alley. Oh, I hate talking in cars. You don't have much choice, if you see what I mean. I see. All right, forward march. Well, I bet you've been talking to June Devlin. Never mind who I've been talking to. It's pretty dull you got there, Nick. Of course, when I say you got, I use the term loosely. Shut up. Well, don't tell me you trust her. You got to keep that mouth shut. Yeah, sure. Well, what now? Try that blue Nash. You're going to drive. I hope it's got hydromatic. Don't be funny. I didn't mean to be. Get behind the wheel. Yes, sir. Now start her up in no funny business. Okay, now head for the George Washington Bridge. I know a nice, quiet spot on the other side. Hey, you're pretty low on gas. What are you worried about? You won't have to walk back. Get going. Last year, thousands of Americans who tried to get away with carelessness on the highways were killed or permanently injured in traffic accidents. No, accidents don't always happen to the other fellow. Unless you are meticulous in your observance of the rules of highway safety, you and your loved ones are vulnerable to the menace of traffic accidents. Most frequent causes of such accidents are speed too great for the conditions of the road, failure to keep to the right of the center line, and immoderate drinking by the driver. Every motorist should learn and obey traffic signals and signs. Every motorist should be alert and careful every moment behind the wheel. Every motorist and pedestrian should take an active role in supporting the safety movement in his or her community. Encourage driver training in your high schools. Teach your children the rules of safety on the highway. And remember, the life you save may be your own. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Thirty-five minutes have passed since Nick Zale offered to take Mike Waring for a ride. And now, five miles beyond the George Washington Bridge. All right, Waring, slow down. Pull into that side road there. Okay, any place along here will be fine. All right, get out. What for? This is so cozy. You're going to get out? Okay, Nick. Let's suppose you join me. Let go. Let go or I'll shoot. No, you don't. Oh, you nasty man. Ah, drop it. So you want to play rough, huh? Leave me alone. Yeah, I'll let you alone. Not so tough without that gun, are you? All right, now get back in the car. This time you drive. You're going to take me for another ride, and I guarantee you'll like this even less. It's all well and good, Mike, but you heard what the man claims. He says he just wanted to talk to you. That's all. Uh, so you had to drive me clear to Jersey? And... The air there is better for my sinuses. Look, Sergeant, I tell you, he killed Frenchy Devlin. Where's his motive? I can give you a dozen. Number one, with Frenchy out of the way, he could take over the club. Not to mention Frenchy's widow. You're crazy. How do you think you'd look without those teeth? <clears throat> I hate to spoil your fun, Mike, but there's one thing wrong with your theory. Frenchy was gunned at 4.30. So? So at 4.15, Nick was down here renewing his license to carry a gun. Are you sure of that? Positive. Now, you tell me how one man can be in two places at the same time. Now, wait a minute, Sergeant. I think I see how it could be managed. How? I'll need a guinea pig to demonstrate. Luckily, I know where I can find one. Want to come along and watch...
Come. Hello, Steve. Hi. Uh, you remember Sergeant Corbett? Yes, yeah, sure. How do you feel? Well, I'm much better, thanks. Well, we got it all locked up. Good. No, it's not as good as all that. We're going to need your help, Steve. Well, I'll do anything I can. All right, here's the problem. I last under Nick Zale as Frenchy's murderer. But unfortunately, he has a cast iron alibi. How's that? Well, it seems Frenchy was killed at half past four, and at 4.15, Nick was down at police headquarters. Now, it would take him at least 40 minutes to get from there to Frenchy's apartment, so, uh, well, you see the problem that creates. Well, sure, how can one man be in two places at the same time? That's just what I asked. Yeah, well, I finally thought of the answer. What? He can't be. So that means we have to look to someone else. What do you mean? I'm afraid you're elected, Steve. What? You killed Frenchie. So you got it all figured out, huh? I think so. The only reason I passed you by originally was because it seemed too obvious. Well, I figured on that. Uh -huh. Well, you were wrong. Eventually, we had to come back to you. Yeah, but there's one thing you didn't figure out. Hey, watch it, Mike. He's got a gun. There's nothing to worry about, Sergeant. I noticed it the first time I was here, so I removed the shells. Well, you no well, good. Well, I couldn't afford to have you hurt yourself. Dirty double cross. All right, let's have it, Steve. Thanks. Well, so this is the little gimmick. What the devil? It's loaded. Uh -huh. But you said you emptied it. Well, I guess I can't be trusted. But you can't be trusted either, so that makes us even. Stephen, take care of him, Sergeant. He's all yours. You got enough there, or would you like a refill? No, 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 this is fine, Mike. Well, I'm glad you're happy, Corbett. After all, this party is on you. Uh, on me? Well, didn't I make you look like a big man? Yeah, you made me look like a first-class schmo. Huh? I said right at the beginning that Steve Richards was our boy. Oh, yes, but you never could have made it stick without my help. I like that. I got a good mind. Oh, <laughs> don't flatter yourself. You've got no mind at all. Look, if I could talk you out of Steve as a suspect, what do you think a lawyer would have done? When Steve pulled that gun, that was the one piece of evidence you needed. But you never would have gotten it without my badgering you. Yeah, what gets me is his motive. After all, he only met Frenchie twice. Yeah, but that second meeting was a butte. So he decided to get even. Well, I don't know. Now, what's the matter, Sergeant? Haven't you ever been so sore at someone you felt you could kill him right then and there? Steve never learned to stifle his impulse. Come to think of it, you're right. Yeah, there's one character I run across occasionally, and every time I do, I get a mad desire to throttle him. Who's that? You. <laughs> I better leave before I give way to the impulse. Hey, waiter, give him the check. <laughs> Good night, Mike. The Case of the Killer's Key. The Case of the Killer's Key. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that if love laughs at locksmiths, it may be because death holds the key. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. <laughs>